WNDS Sports and Tri-State Megabucks present the championships of the New Hampshire Candle Pin Bowling Association. It's the 1996 All Event State Tournament. The 1996 All Event State Tournament is sponsored in part by the Carphone Store of Nashua. And now from the legendary bowling center, here are Doug Brown and Dan Murphy. From the Londonderry Bowling Center here in Londonderry, New Hampshire, thanks so very much for joining us, and welcome once again to our continuing coverage of the New Hampshire State All Events Championship. Doug Brown along with Dan Murphy. Last week, uh, we crowned Janet Park as the four-time New Hampshire State Women's Champion, and now this week, Dan, we begin our uh, six-game match. Again, it will be spread over this week and next week to determine the uh, men's champion uh, with two terrific competitors. Yeah, that's right, and one of them is trying to go for two consecutive championships in a row, and that's Gary Carrington. All right, let's, uh, let's meet our two competitors. First of all, the guy coming in here is the number four seed, but he's been bowling exceptionally well, uh, winning his two match play uh, rounds with very impressive scores from Plastown, New Hampshire, Dave Richards. Okay, Dave, uh, averaging 133, high single 196, high triple 470. All right, and the guy who will be coming in today as the number one seed, he's been sitting in that number one spot after the 21 games of the All Events competition with an outstanding score of 28-79 and just waiting around for his opponent. Now he has one. And uh, he'll be trying to uh, win back-to-back -back state championships now, as Dan said, our defending champion from 1995, also from Plastow, New Hampshire, Gary Carrington. Okay, and Gary comes in averaging 132, high single 196, high triple 480. It's the uh, Battle of Plastow in addition to the state championship here. <laughs> let's, uh, let's show you the, uh, the matchups now in the brackets as to uh, how these guys arrived here. Again, 21 games in the state championship all events competition. After the 21 games are over, the bowler with the highest total pinfall receives a buy into this championship match. The uh, next four bowlers, two, three, four, and five, have to play off in match play competition. And as you can see, Dave Richards, Dan, uh, not only has beaten uh, two very tough competitors in Tim Lipke and Mike Poulin in the preliminary rounds, but also with outstanding scores both times. Yes, both over 700. Fantastic bowl in the preliminary rounds. All right, we've got six games now to decide the New Hampshire Men's All Events Championship, and we will get the match started. Dave Richards and Gary Carrington when we come back to Londonderry after these messages. Stay with us. Twenty-one games, as we mentioned, to uh, reach the top five in the New Hampshire All Events State Championship. Five games of singles, five of doubles, five in mixed doubles, and then three games each in both men's teams and mixed teams competition. So that adds up to twenty-one games. And then in the case of Dave Richards, who had to come through the uh, match play version, ten more games. So thirty-one games for him because he had to roll those two five-game matches. But now we are in the final. And it's six games to the title. And Dave Richards starts with a spare. Both of these guys have been with us uh, on any number of occasions in various formats, both great competitors. They both know each other very well, obviously. Big first ball, but somehow the 5'10". 5'10", and you can see Dave kind of twisting and turning there, hoping the piece of wood between the 5 and the 10 would turn for him. Talked about his scores uh, against Tim Lipke, 7'17", to Tim Lipke, 6'57". And you figure, well, I'll take on Dave next match because he's got to cool off. Well, he didn't. Well, Mike Poole in 7'35", to 7, uh, 6'73". A 28 start for Dave. And now Gary Carrington, the defending New Hampshire champion. Won this event last year in his first time entered. Gary also was the Massachusetts state champion back in 1988. Out 
Nine to open. Spare leave now on the three and the six. And there it is. Each bowler has one mark now. Gary Carrington putting his spare up in the second. All the bowlers we've seen come on here, Dan, I don't recall that any of the others have the exact same model bowling ball that Dave Richards use, he uses. He has that double-crossed line, like two circles surrounding his ball. One circle is in red and the other circle is in white. And when the ball goes down the lane, uh, you can clearly see the spin on it. But our great friends at Paramount Industries, if you want balls look like that, <laughs> they can do it. <laughs> Nice job, Dan. <laughs> no Bob Pro and all the gang will thank me for that. Yes, oh. absolutely. Right through the middle. And the very unusual 2 3 4 6 leave. Not quite. Ten box, three in a row for Dave Richards. Eight fill on the spare. Trying to make it two in a row, converting the one and the two pins. Yes, the two in a row. Nine drop this time. Gary takes his first lead of the match and has a chance at another mark. And has it with the single. Three straight. in the pocket. Looked like it might be a little thin, but it worked out okay. The 2-5. Looked like the 2-5 and 10 at first. And 10 was removed. Yes. Second mark for Dave. Again, through the middle, one, five, and eight. Spread Eagle plus a nine pin left. Eight box. Now Gary Carrington working on his third consecutive spare. <laughs> Within the state candle pin championships, of course, what we're seeing here on the wins during these weeks of competition is the all events final, but 
there are individual championships in all of the separate disciplines. And we will run down some of those for you. Big spare, four in a row for Gary Carrington. One, two, seven, ten. And the solid nine drop. Gary Carrington is the 1996 state singles champion. He rolled 699 in his five games of singles competition. He now has five marks in a row. Gary won the singles title by 22 pins over Mike Poulin. Gary also shared the men's doubles title with his partner Joe Ashline. And again, Mike Poulin was involved in the runner-up spot as he and his partner Fred Ranella finished second to Joe and Gary. Oh, not good, quite. Good try, the four, seven, six, ten. In the men's team event, we take another look at the spare attempt by Dave Richards. Worked it out for a 10. The men's team event was won by the team of George McAllister, Dick Booth, Jeff Edgerly, Charlie Wiley, and Pat Pay. Oh, will he get it? I think so. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh. yeah. Great shot for Dave Richards, had to wait on the seven pin. Actually, I thought this piece of wood in front of the seven might catch that wood and stop it, but just got by it with enough momentum to knock that seven pin over. His third mark, all spears, waiting for a first strike from either of these bowlers. I'm surprised we waited as long as we have. Gary Carrington working on five consecutive spares. A little heavy that time, seven Phil. And a tough leave here, the two, four, and six. Almost. The mixed teams state champion. Deb DeRocher, Tony Marie Baldinelli, Joe Ashline, and Gary Carrington. And the mixed doubles state champion for 1996, Joanne Vandiver and Dennis Valcourt. So of the five disciplines involved in the all events, Gary Carrington was involved in three of the state champions. Singles, men's doubles, and mixed teams. Oh, big strike. There's your answer. All you have to do is mention it. This time in the one-two pocket. Carries everything but the Six, and then finally something come off the sidewall, the trip to six pin for the first strike. Dave Richards working on a spare in the eighth. Leaves it short, just three. Stay with it. This was the same leave uh, in reverse, wasn't it? That he just converted for the spare the last time up. And yeah, without the six pin up. And going for as many as he can, and he gets a nine box. Well, Davis had three marks, but just 90, uh, 101 through nine, and that's because of the two three fills, which hurt. Three and six. For the spare. Yep, in the 10th. Dave will stay up there to fill the spare. Although he did lose track of the box count, I guess that shows that he's into the match. <laughs> On the spare in the 10th, Dave will take eight more and it'll be a 119 opening game. Gary already, as you see, at 118 with a strike up plus 
two fill balls here in the eighth. Right, drilling it through the middle. That's a five fill on the strike. Some 123 through eight. And works it out for a nine. So 132 with a box to go. Again, this game the first of six. Stretching through this week and next week. We'll be back with the final three games of this match next Saturday at noon. Here on the wins. And Gary will have a split in the tenth. The three, four, and six. Almost made the two, four, and six earlier. So Dave Richards will make up a little ground here in the 10th. One forty-two for Gary Carrington and a 23-pin lead after game one with five more to come to decide the men's 1996 New Hampshire All Events Championship. We'll be back. All right, here are the top 10 finishers in total pinfall in the 1996 New Hampshire Men's All Events Competition. Dave Cromie in sixth place, Steve Plant, Joe Ashline eighth, Dan Valcourt ninth, Jim Judd in 10th spot, and then the top five that we showed you earlier in the brackets, Gary Carrington with the number one spot, Mike Poulin, Tim Lipke, Dave Richards, and Steve Vadney. Gary Carrington, at least so far, making that number one seed stand up. One game in the books, and he's got a 23-pin lead. A long way to go. And both of these guys certainly capable of putting up big, big numbers. You saw the numbers that uh, Dave Richards had in those two preliminary matches. Averaging well over 140 for those 10 games. Eight box for Gary. Gary is from Plastow, New Hampshire. He and his wife Kathleen have two sons, Matthew and Michael. Close call. And a nine box. Make it 17. Two open frames for Dave Richards to cut into that 23 pin advantage. Thin hit wants the ten pin to go. Ooh, right on the object pin. The <laughs> certainly was, but that's all he got. Just the two. Has to take an eight. Dave Richards also lives in Plastow, New Hampshire, with his wife Beth. Dave works as a traffic manager for MVP Sports. And he will have a spare leave here on the three and the five. Got to be careful of the wood, though. Should help. He plays it right. And there you go. Just had to worry about the cap. 
Now he looks very sharp on his on his uh, spare shooting. It's the fills that have right. been his downfall so far with just three on two of them in that first game. Five marks total now for Dave Richards, all spares. Gary Carrington has five spares and a strike, and the five spares came consecutively in the first game. And now he's got a spread eagle. Earlier, uh, Dan, in that first game, Gary was full on the head pin on a couple of occasions, but he was carrying extra pins. That time he didn't. Nine box. Hope uh, all of you had a chance to tune in last Sunday for our championship match in the Tri-State Megabucks Tournament of Champions. Bob Kelly winning the title, defeating Tim Lipke, who had uh, won a couple of matches in a row to get to the final. And by the way, Dan, thanks for uh, holding down the fort solo uh, for all those weeks while I was on assignment. <laughs> Well, we got through it. We missed you. <laughs> well, I certainly didn't well, I did. The crew didn't <laughs> miss you, but I did. <laughs> well, I certainly didn't want to miss the Tournament of Champions. It's the event we look forward to all year, and a good time was had by all, I understand. Yes. Two more open frames for Gary Carrington, and Dave Richards with a spare hanging in the second. Triangle. Barely caught the head pin, got some good mixing action. Leaves a triangle in the right hand corner to the four seven eight. Starting tomorrow, by the way, in that noon time slot. Our stars and strikes time slot will be moving into our uh, rebroadcast schedule. Some of the better shows from this past season through the summer. And then we will be back in the fall with brand new matches and a new look to uh, some of the bowling here on the winds of New England. We hope uh, you'll be with us in the fall. We think you'll enjoy it. Uh, we'll have some surprises in store and some new things planned. So we hope you'll join us for all that. Keep watching uh, the winds of New England, uh, especially in the late summer, early fall, for the exact dates of when we will begin the new season on Candlepin Stars and Strikes. Another spare up for Dave Richards. He has cut a little bit into that lead of Gary Carrington. We'll be back with more of the state finals after these words. Gary Carrington with the lead in the match by 13 at this point. A little to the right. Four horsemen plus the eight and 10. A little too thin. Trying to play it on the inside. Five open, yeah, five open frames to start this game for Gary. A little erratic starting the second game. Not on the head pin as consistently as he was the first game, but we have a long ways to go. Second game of six game total. Four horsemen right. And an eight box. So all of a sudden, uh, it seemed so easy in the first game for Gary, and now six boxes without a mark. State All Events Finals. 
here on the Winds of New England, being brought to you in part by the Carphone Store of Nashua. One of our loyal sponsors here on the Winds, the Carphone Store of Nashua, now an authorized Bell Atlantic 9X mobile agent. Dave, six on the spare. Dave still has not been able to get spares back to back, Dan. He's been uh, kind of scattering them all over the score sheet. He's fighting and clawing his way back into the match, though. Now the lead is just six pins for Gary, and of course, Dave is opposite an eight frame. Bear it up. Davis marked three times in a row over there on lane 29. Still trying to solve lane 30 in this game. Somebody just yelled at him, can't you put them together? <laughs> <laughs> Five of Dave's seven marks have been over there on lane 29. And Gary is through the center again. Gets a little break. And a little wood left over on the two, four, seven, and 10. This may snap over, let's see. Yep. Well, he threw Spare. a ball that could easily have been a spread eagle, but he did get a little break, and the wood set up nicely for him. His first mark, the second game. Each bowler now with seven marks. Gary has the only strike of the match. Four, six, ten. Piece of wood in front of the four. Double piece, one in front, one behind the six pin. Nope. <laughs> ten bucks. 79 through eight in this second game for Gary after the 142 opener, as you see. Richards looking to make some hay on these fills. Six. Perhaps more importantly, not really a spare leave left over. Uh, two, four, seven, and then the six pin. Just go for the three. Hopefully he can cut the two pin on the left-hand side. Now it's going to have to come off the wall. He's inside. Well, Dave had uh, overtaken Gary for the lead briefly, but now he's going to give it back because of that spare in the seventh that uh, Gary put up, so he has retaken the lead by five, uh, by six, rather. But he's back on lane 29. No, oh, it's his favorite. <laughs> Boy. Must be the left of the red line. Uh, he's right on the pin. Boy, going back, this is almost uncanny, Dan. Going back to game one, that's six times in a row that Dave has marked on lane 29. <laughs> but in that same stretch, he has not marked at all in lane 30. As a bowler, are you conscious of that in this situation if you're up there? Uh, I, it begins to wear at you after a while, yeah. You begin to try different things on that lane 30. See if you're starting in the same spot as you are and on lane 29 in reference to the foul line and things like that, left and right. Sometimes you just two or three boards left or right, which by the time the ball goes 60 feet, it's just off a little bit. Ten box for Gary. Converting the four horsemen on the outside of the head pin for the 10. But Gary has labored here in game two. Oh, needs a mark to break the century mark. In the and pocket, but oh boy. Boy, if he makes this one. <laughs> the house the come eight down. and a ten. <laughs> Gary picks up the two singles for a ninety nine and a two game total of two forty one. Well, again, 
Chance for Dave to take over the lead. Trails by six. And opposite two ten boxes. Both of these guys have identical high singles, 196. Dave continues to struggle on lane 30, and especially in fill situations, just four. Not quite. You get the feeling that would have gone if you were over <laughs> on the other lane? <laughs> no. Probably wouldn't have been shooting at that many pins over there. <laughs> Probably not. And to 10. So he fails to take the lead. Just two pins now for Gary Carrington, but he's still got an open frame in the 10th. Well, here, <laughs> here we go. go. Oh, hum. Another big nine drop. Well, good point here is that he's going to stay on lane 29 to fill it. <laughs> he won't have to go back on lane 30 until next game. Spare in the 10th. That's seven in a row now on lane 29 for Dave Richards. Anything over two, he'll take the lead. We had a feeling that this match was going to be a good one, and it is shaping up as one right now. Oh, my. How about a tie match? <laughs> How about that? He must have thought he was on lane 30. Well, Gary and Dave having a few words after that. A very strange two-fill on the 1-9 chop-out. And after two games in the books, we're all even. Well, it's a four-game match now, and we'll be back with game three in a minute. Well, two games are in the book, and we're going to start all over again. <laughs> Tied at 241 after two. Dave Richards trying desperately to solve this lane 30, and he just, well, he was off camera, but he just waved goodbye to that wood. He knew it was going to spin off. Well, he's on the hit pin that time. He gets a 510. I wouldn't be surprised he cuts this over. Uh, you're going to be on the other side of it, Dave. <laughs> <laughs> That's the hard way doing it that way. And it's a nine. Well, here we go. <laughs> he just yelled out spare. <laughs> <laughs> Off the head pin this time. Now this will be a little testier spare than he's had. Four horsemen plus the nine. And let's see if the wood settles down. Well, nestling right there against the two isn't bad. As long as he doesn't catch the cap. He doesn't, but the nine pin is still there. Well, that breaks the streak. Dave had marked seven consecutive times over on lane 29 before that box. Seven of his nine marks are on that lane. Let's see what happens to the head pin. You know, it just flies right into the right-hand corner. Never comes off the wall or anything. Give him some help with the nine pin. Solid nine drop for Gary. Has the four pin in his sights for the spare. That is his eighth mark of the day. And he regains the lead by a pin, plus this ball. debating whether to use the wood in the center there or try the triangle. I think the centerpiece roll back. I think it's a little too deep for him, but see what happens. Nice. Now the triangle. Ten. To retake the lead by seven. No 
Don't forget, next Saturday at noon, we'll have the conclusion of this match, the final three games. One, two, six, and ten for Dave. No wood. Do this one himself. $250 to the runner-up in this match, $500 to the state champion, plus a beautiful trophy from the NHCBA, a granite likeness of the state of New Hampshire. And let's see, yes sir, <laughs> that's strike number one for Dave Richards. That's another situation where the wood in front rolled out far enough so that second piece could get behind it. Watch what happens here. You see the wood rolling out towards us. It allows the second piece to roll in behind it with enough momentum to take that pin over for the strike. I believe that's Dave's first strike, isn't it? Yes, it is. No shock that it came on lane 29 either. <laughs> Two, four, six, and ten for Gary. Nine bucks to hold that seven pin lead, but now opposite the strike. I want to take a moment to thank one of our new sponsors here on the Winds of New England for Candle Pin Bowling, Meineke Discount Muffler, all their great locations. Helping to bring you the action here in the state finals. And Gary misfires. That may cost him the lead in the match, at least temporarily. Ten bucks, and we will sneak away to a break. Seven pins the lead for Gary Carrington, but Dave Richards will be working on that strike when we come back to Londonderry in a minute. Dave Richards working on his first strike of the match and hoping to take the lead. And also hoping to break a long drought without a mark here on lane 30. I don't know. It's going to be <laughs> difficult this 4, 7, and 10. Piece of wood way out in front of the 10 pin. That probably oh. will snap away from the 10 pin. I don't know. I don't know if he can clip the other piece of wood in the end and take this four and seven or not. That's what he's That's trying. What he's oh, he's oh, what a great front shot. of it. Oh, my. What a great shot. <laughs> I don't quite know what he said. Something about getting a mark on this line. And that's, that's a nine, nine box. You saw Dave immediately wave it off. It's a nine. Let's take a look at that spare attempt. What a great effort here. Right in front of that. And then another one right in front. Oh, and he comes back with a strike. Well, that's not the order in which Dave would have preferred it, but Dave still does not have two marks in a row in this match. And Gary might have ended up with a half Worcester, grabs a couple more. chance at a spare here. Oh, oh yeah. great shot. Oh, absolutely. Well, that's another, that's at least twice now, uh, Dan, that Gary has thrown a ball that he thought would be worse than it turned out, and both times he's converted him into marks. Well, that's a great shot. Nine and another. <laughs> Gary hanging on to the lead here. Actually retaking it after Dave had picked up a uh, small lead with that strike fill. 
working on another strike now. Oh, there it is. There's the double. That's three out of four. And Dan, would you believe that breaks an 0 for 10 streak for Marks on lane 30 for Dave Richards. What a time to break it. Follow up with a double strike. that would to stick around. 3, 6, 10, and the 7 pin. He's got his con concentrate on the 3, 6, and 10. It looks like the angle the wood should take the 7. No. no. He, he had to split the 3, 6. By coming up high in the 3 pin, it turned that piece of wood instead of sending it directly against the 7. One eleven through 8 for Dave Richards. Watch the wood now. It turned and Went on the inside of the seven pin. And Gary Carrington working on a pair of spares. And he'll have to show us another shot here, although that wood is setting up for a possible sweep across from left to right. Not much room for error, but I think he can make it if he plays that wood. Gary threw 142 and a 99 in both games. It almost looks like he'd rather be someplace else. <laughs> mm. You can't tell by looking at Gary whether he's born good or bad. He got the same uh, same expression. Wow. This time full in the head pin. Leaves the five pin. And then, of course, the four, seven, and the six, ten in either corner. Looking to make something snap and it won't happen. Eight bucks. So a 13 pin lead for Dave Richards now. Dave has a triangle, that's the good news. Plus the 10 pin. Let's see. <laughs> Somebody better tell Dave that he already got a mark on lane 30. <laughs> <laughs> and it knows it. He ran all the way to Salem <laughs> trying to buy that one, but it didn't quite work out. Nice try though, 121 through nine. Dave has 12 marks in the match, nine of them here on lane 29, and this time a little too full on the head pin. He wants that piece of wood to stay in play because he's going to play that wood to the right and s try to sweep everything to the left. Well, he's trying to move it over some too. He's got room, but... Yeah, probably leave the nine pin, even if he can get a hold of that. Uh, the nine pin's going to probably be the m biggest problem. You know, wow, it only took, only took the seven. It was a little deeper than we thought. Couldn't get the two pin either with it. So there'll be an opportunity here for Gary Carrington. Nice 10 for Dave Richards, 131. And a three game total of 372. And here's what happened on the spare. Well, you can see now that that wood is, the cap, the front cap is almost level with the three pin. And that's what caused that to go so deep into the corner. Well, there's a great mix. How about that ball? <laughs> Gary looked down there after it was over like <laughs> couldn't believe it happened believe it. <laughs> couldn't believe it happened right here it looked ugly then it got starting to look better i said oh he's gonna have a nine pin drop and then finally the 10 pin went down second strike for gary and uh, the double he gets the double both bowlers with double strikes here in game three Both times, the 10 pin, the last to go. Well, Gary's going to have the lead in this match, barring a real bad ball here. Actually, he'd have to have two bad balls. And he gets a big nine drop. Hey, 
and a chance to finish it off with the spare. There's a piece of wood out front that may roll away. If it doesn't, it'll be out of play. Sometimes it's hard to figure how the, that pin was almost in the right-hand channel. Now it's rolled all the way over onto the left, and it's in play. <laughs> Not a factor in the shot, of course. Spare in the tenth. So just 49 pins in the last two boxes for Gary Carrington, and he takes the lead at the end of three games with three more to come next week. Gary Carrington will have a 16-pin advantage going into next week's completion of our New Hampshire State Championship. We'll be right back. Three games of our six-game state championship men's all-events final in the books now, and Gary Carrington with the double strike in the final two boxes overtakes Dave Richards with that 388 to the 372. A pretty good, interesting uh, three-game uh, match that we are, three-game half a match that we had there. Very interesting work. Uh, Gary started like a house fire. Looked like he might try and blow this thing wide open at the beginning. Then he struggled in the second game and about even in the third. That's right. He took control early, and then uh, Dave had trouble on, as we mentioned through the whole show, on lane 30. Finally saw 30 through the double strike, took the lead, going to the last two boxes, and what does Gary do? Take control of the match again, throwing his own double strike. So it sets up to an exciting finish next week. Well, yeah, and I think what we saw today is exactly what we expected, which is uh, these two guys know each other very well. They bowl together often and against each other often, and uh, they're both capable of putting up big numbers. And obviously we saw that when the strikes start, to go, they can go in bunches, really, for both of these guys. If you go back and ask if they missed a legitimate spare leave, I can't mm -hmm. remember at all. Either right. bowler missing him, so uh, they're sharp that way. It's just a matter of who gets the fills and who doesn't make that final mistake. And maybe Dave will be looking to try and move the competition onto another lane somewhere. That could be. <laughs> I ho hope lane 30 breaks down or something. I don't know. <laughs> well, that'll do it for this week. Don't forget, next Saturday at noon, we will have the conclusion of this six-game match between Gary Carrington and Dave Richards. Until then, for Dan Murphy and the whole crew at the Londonderry Bowling Center, I'm Doug Brown. Have a great weekend, everybody.